Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Software Engineer K here, and we've got some really, really great stuff to go through today. Now, the first part of the video, I'm just going to be going through some feature bugs. So I know Reese and David sometimes watch these videos as well, so this is mainly for them to raise awareness of, because I know the previous video where we highlighted the um, app exceptions and performance issues, they did actually pass those on to the developers. So I'm just going to be going through a couple of uh, feature bugs and just some bit simple improvements, um, and then going into the updates that we've been getting from VV, Trevor um, and then lastly I want to go through a fundamental analysis of why um, Ecomi is actually extremely extremely undervalued right now I know the whole market's in a dip um, and I have been buying more on a dip but why it's extremely undervalued now from a purely fundamental perspective so firstly is on the app right now and this is something that kind of annoyed me at the start as well um, and it's probably going to be confusing for new people to the app as more people sign up because there are a lot of people signing up now um, is some of the nfts show as sold out and some show as well they're not sold out they have prices on them and the reason for that is and this is kind of what i've spotted is it's only going to display sold out if uh, quantity available is equal to zero and we know that some of these nfts they are reserved so the quantity technically isn't zero, but for the public, i.e. yourself and myself, it is zero. Like we can't buy these reserved NFTs, therefore, you know, they're partners or licenses or whoever. So really what they could do is rather than uh, having just one single quantity of NFTs, which they're checking to see if um, it's zero or not, they can have two different quantities or properties. Um, a public quantity and a, I guess, internal quantity. And some of both could be like the total quantity. So really all you need to do is check the publicly available quantity um, if you wanna assert whether to display the sold out or not. And then if they do something like that, then all of these should say sold out, even though some are showing as reserved for, you know, the internal people. Um, and the second one, this one's a little bit annoying as well, is just getting spammed with these push notifications. So I've got 21 notifications from the marketplace, even though I am not actually able to access the marketplace yet. I wasn't one of the lucky people to get in. But what they could do is just enable... Um, kind of a notify me once option um, that should be quite simple you know it should cache the notifications and if that notification is already currently available in your cache then it's just not going to display more um, or display every once every hour or something you know um, you guys can you know figure out what's best for that um, now moving on to the announcement so uh, vv trevor he is the guy who used to work for riot um, content creation um, now for um, vv and he has said that they've announced four more brands that have not been seen on the platform yet that they're working on. And he did also say that we guess one of the big brands correctly. Um, my speculation for that was Star Wars. So we've got quite a lot of good stuff coming out. Um, he's going to kind of go through the process of what it takes to build out these, um, well, the content side of the NFTs as well. So I think that is going to be pretty cool. And yeah, so... Going on to what I said previously about the marketplace. So the marketplace has actually taken in another 25,000 users. And this is what I said in my previous video as well. When it comes to software development, when you roll out a beta, um, kind of a beta testing stage, you test about one to five percent of users and then you roll in the other 95 percent of users. Um, sometimes uh, it, that does vary. So you can see that rather than rolling another 5,000, they rolled in 25,000. And I think the next step is just they're going to roll in everyone. And that is going to be good because that's going to bring a lot more liquidity to that marketplace. Um, and also the Ultraman. So in my other video as well, I did say I was going to get one of these Ultraman secret rares because I was affected by the bug um, when it came to um, purchasing an Ultraman being oversold. And I know that this, I did also highlight my previous video, the actual artwork had the Marvel logo on it. Um, obviously, they've, you know, not shown the Marvel logo on this, um, on the one that we're getting. But that was my initial speculation for why Marvel is somehow related to VV. And then I did the previous previous video as well, where um, I showed you guys the uh, Captain America assets as well. And then there were the documentations to do with Marvel lights as well that someone else uncovered. So there's a lot of hints towards Marvel and Disney um so i did also want to go on this so now the fundamental analysis now this is a really really good blog on their medium um it kind of just explains exactly what their business model looks like and why it's kind of targeted for success and they've used some very very good um case studies as well um this is pretty cool this was a uh, central line there as well um so they've used lego as a case study now lego was um pretty much uh 
you know, going bankrupt, about to collapse in 2002. And the way that they saved the company was through licensing. So, you know, we've got Lego Star Wars, we've got Lego Marvel stuff, we've got Lego Harry Potter. So you can see here just how much additional revenue um, these different brands have been adding. Um, and you can just see their revenue skyrocketed. And they've launched a lot of Lego Star Wars stuff, a lot of Lego Harry Potter stuff, because this is kind of, you know, where the demand is um, for these different, uh, for these brands. And you can see that the cost of their licensing is marginal compared to how much profit they make from it. So, or how much revenue in this case. So that just goes to show that as they get more licenses, which, you know, they said that they've already secured loads. They're just rolling them out one at a time. And also in the previous video with uh, Dr. Dijen Reese said that they've only released kind of like the minor licenses, the major ones they're holding back for now. So how does this all link together? Now, if we look at um, another company that has had Harry Potter, Pokemon, and also in the kind of online revenue space is Niantic and Pokemon Go alone, just that one brand had earned them 1 billion in revenue in one year. And that just goes to show because the market cap right now of Ecomi is about 1 billion. And so a one-to-one -one market cap with just one brand, you know, when it comes to um, valuating companies, there's something called a price to sales ratio. So the sales would be how much revenue and the price is how much it costs to, you know, buy a stake in that company. Now, um, obviously, we're not talking about shares or Vivi here. We talk about OMI tokens, but we know that the licenses is going to help cause the value of OMI tokens to appreciate because, you know, we've gone through the whole tokenomic model already. I'm not going to go through that now. But generally, if the market cap of Ecomi is 1 billion. And if Pokemon does something similar for Ecomi, brings in a billion revenue, then that is a one to one ratio. And that is considered very, very good. Now, companies who earn far, far less revenue than their market cap valuation, a lot of them are still actually very good companies. Um, but any company that brings in more revenue than what their market cap is valued at, that is a very, very you know cheap company to buy or, you know, cheap token to buy in this case. And a very, very good example of that that I own a lot of um, is my majority of my portfolio holdings is Tesla. Um, Tesla had a maximum price to sales ratio of 30. So just put that in perspective, let's say Vivi did 1 billion revenue in total, right? That's with all their brands combined. And if they had a 30, a 30 to 1 ratio, then their market cap should be worth 30 billion but it's not, it's worth 1 billion. And if they get to that stage where their market cap is worth 30 billion, then you're looking at, you know, OMI tokens that are priced at around about, ooh, about 25, 30 cents, which, you know, that is literally a moonshot from where we are right now. And judging by this information, I've shown you these case studies, these companies have done it already. And they're not that different from Vivi in terms of the team behind them. So I would say, you know, definitely read this Medium blog. I'm going to link it below in the description. And there is some really, really good information here outside of, you know, the case studies. Uh, they've spoken a lot about, you know, how did life help Disney, how it's helped Pokemon, um, PH, PVH as well. So this, I think everyone should read, to be honest, um, because it's really going to help you apply what I've spoken about just now into perspective. And then you're going to realize, wow, Ecomi is actually very, very undervalued right now. Um, so I believe we are going to get the drop for the Ultraman artwork this Thursday. I will be anticipating that and I'll be participating in that as well. Um, and we also have a digital NFT event coming up. Um, so I will also be... Um, tuning into that just to see if there's anything that uh david you can kind of hint at us as well so that should be exciting oh we also had the uh, birthday of superman uh yesterday as well um i think that they should be releasing a superman um nft at some point because we know dc is definitely there because we've had batman and you know suicide squad already so that should be coming up so i am pretty excited with what there is to come but as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please do like and subscribe to support the content. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.